Don't worry, we're still on the right track. Khadgar felt compelled to say as the group stopped for rest and to drink some precious water. They needed the reassurance. They had traveled north from the Orkish citadel, skirting the savage coastline to the east. The ground had remained consistent with what they had seen near the portal itself, though less severe. Cracked earth, gray dusty soil, withered plants and trees. They had passed patches of greenery here and there, but most of Draenor was dreary and desolate and bitter. Now the ground around them had grown more uneven, its dips and rises more significant, and wind whipped by on all sides. Most assuredly a mountain range, but like none he'd ever seen. Stone spikes protruded from the cliff walls around them, jutting outward in every direction, as if the peaks themselves were hungry for blood. The rock was a dull reddish brown, the color of dried blood, and the sky seemed a vivid scarlet in comparison. It was one of the most unwelcoming places he'd ever encountered, and he suspected the shudder that passed through him had as much to do with that as with the sharp winds knifing among the spikes. Idly, Khadgar reached out to touch the nearest spike, but stopped just short of actual contact. Perhaps tempting the fates was not the best plan. The skull is not far, he said again. You're certain? Trollian asked. Oh, trust me, I'm certain. He could sense its presence in his head without even searching now. A dull pose pulse behind the eyes that almost became visible when he squeezed them shut. Definitely close. Good, Trollian replied, hefting his hammer and eyeing the spikes. I've had enough of this place. I think we began Khadgar, but Alaria lifted a commanding hand for silence. Listen. Khadgar strained to hear, but his ears were not as sharp as an elf's. Moments passed, all he heard were the winds, and then... There it was, a sort of flapping sound, like wings, but somehow sharper than those of any bird he knew. The only creature he'd ever encountered that made a noise like that in flight was... Dragon, he shouted, grabbing Trollian and yanking his friend down as he dove to the ground himself. Just behind him, he heard an angry roar and a hiss. White hot pain blossomed in his arm, and even as he sucked in his breath of agony, he heard more hissing. There was a smoking hole in his sleeve and a nasty looking burn in his arm that in his arm below that. The hissing was the sound of something eating away at the rocks below them as well. Magma. Crassus had said that black dragons spat magma. Glancing up, Cadgar saw several small dark forms flit among the spikes and then rise and swoop back around. Shields up, Trollian shouted. Raising to his, rising to his feet, and weapons at the ready. They're not fully grown dragons. We can take them. Trollian was right. The creatures attacking them were no larger than horses, perhaps six feet long, but with a wingspan wider than that. They had small heads and only a few spikes along their back, and Khadgar realized that these must be an immature form. Drakes, he remembered Crassus calling them once. Yes, drakes. Drakes, young dragons, he warned Trollian, raising his staff as the black drakes circled for a second attack. Not as strong as their parents, but still dangerous. Trollian nodded, but his focus was on the attacking creatures. He was back in his element now, and had settled at once into the military commander mindset. Archers, fire at will, he shouted. Beside him, Alaria began losing arrows loosing arrows at the small, agile creatures. One of her shots took a drake through the throat. The power of her longbow propelled the shaft clean through the dragon's lighter scales, and the thing reared up, clearly in pain. A second arrow pierced its eye and brain, and it fell to the ground with a croak and lie still. That heartened the soldiers, and they swung with enthusiasm, swatting at the young dragons and ducking to avoid the creature's small but sharp claws and the fist-sized goblets of lava they spewed. The drake shot past them, banked, circled back. There are fewer of them now. Several of their fellows lay dead among the spikes. Trollian turned to say something else to Khadgar and stopped, 
toppling without warning and catching himself just in time to avoid being impaled upon the nearest cluster of stone spikes. Everyone was staggering about, dancing to keep their footing as the ground itself danced beneath them. What in the name of light? Trollian asked. His words jarred out of him. Then he was staring back and to the left of Khadgar. Afraid to see, but terrified of not knowing, Khadgar glanced beside, glanced behind himself, and almost fell over from shock. The creature pounding through, not around, but through, the stone spikes was monstrous even compared with an ogre. It stood easily twice as tall as those giant creatures, its skin as thick and rough as rock, sweeping designs carved into its arms and shoulders. A ridge of dark spikes ran like miniature mountain range down its back, and more spikes protruded from its shoulders and upper arms. But the face, the face was perhaps the most horrific thing of it all. It resembled that of an ogre, but was far more intelligent. The creature had no tusk, but its teeth were long and sharp and yellowing. Its ears pointed and tufted, and its single eye glaring and glowing, and fastened on them. Intruders, the behemoth shouted. The force of his cry, cracking stone all around them, crushed them. More figures emerged from the stone thicket to the east and west. These were ogres of the same type and size that that Khadgar had encountered before. And they snarled and growled and laughed as they moved toward the Alliance soldiers. Wait, Khadgar shouted. To his relief, the things actually paused. Thank the light. He had the means, at least, to converse with them. We meant no offense. Offense? You live. That is offense, the creature roared and continued to advance. Whatever you're telling him, it isn't working, Trollian muttered. And damn it, here comes the drakes again. Khadgar never thought he'd be happy to see dragons, but when the drake circled back right at the moment for another attack, he wanted to thank them. The ogres and their master were completely distracted when the drakes began spitting mag magma at both groups and turned their attention to the assault from the skies. They raised massive, conical clubs. Khadgar realized at once that they were simply using spires they'd broken off the mountain itself. Khadgar realized an opportunity when he saw one. The drakes, he cried, attack the drakes. Alaria stared at him for a moment and Khadgar knew what she was thinking. This would be a perfect time to flee, to let the drakes attack the ogres and their strange leader for them. But Trillian grinned and nodded. He'd gotten it. Now the Alliance members, too, focused on the flying reptilian creatures, setting to them with swords and arrows, but their efforts were feeble compared with what the ogres did to the drakes. The ogres easily smashed the beasts out of the sky and then stomped on them, crushing the immature dragons beneath, beneath their massive feet. Their oversized leader killed a drake as well, but it didn't bother with the club. Instead, it simply reached up, catching a charging black drake as easily as Khadgar had once caught an apple a friend had tossed to him. The colossal beast held the drake in one hand his thumb and forefinger pinning the young dragon's wings together as it struggled to get free. Then the beast brought the drake to its mouth, tilted its head back, and engulfed the scaled body in a single fierce bite, chewing a few extra times to get the rest of the wings into its cavernous mouth before finally swallowing. That was, Trillian started, but he couldn't find words to encompass what he'd just seen. He lowered his sword and lifted his visor, barely aware of his actions. You, those... The creature peered at him. Dragons come. You not run, but could have. You stay and fight. Helped us. There was a bit of astonishment in that eep, earth the deep voice. Hadgar could well understand it. He was willing to bet that few had willingly risked themselves to help the ogres before. His heart lifted slightly. Things were going exactly as he'd hoped. No, we do not run. We are not your enemies. We only wish. 
Kakar had just drawn breath to continue to negotiate the tentative truce when the ground began to suddenly shake again, and the creature glanced back the way it had come. It hunched in upon itself, arms wrapping protectively around its broad chest, and a strange sound emerged from its hideous mouth, half snarl and half whimper. whimper. Watching it, Khadgar would have, sw would have sworn this beast, which had just all but swallowed a dragon whole, looked frightened. He shuddered to think what could scare such a thing. That question was answered a few minutes later, when a second monstrous beast strode from the mountains. This creature was even larger than the first one, and had more stone spikes protruding from its back and arms. Its skin was redder than that of the others, its, its one eye so pale it was almost white all the way across, and its teeth were longer and sharper. That white eye held great intelligence, and it fastened upon Khadgar and Shralian and the other humans. Who are you, it demanded, and why you still live? We are only passing through, Khadgar stammered. The great bean's eye narrowed in ske skepticism. We aren't your enemies, just let us go and we'll... No, the finality of the single word was chilling. You leave, you speak. Speak of Gron, speak of Gruel. The giant bean thumped his chest. Horde come. No, best you die. Secret stay safe. Gron stay safe. Trollian glanced at the first creature he'd been conversing with, hoping for help, but Khadgar could tell they would not get any there. The massive bean had curled in upon itself after the rebuke looking like nothing so much as a recently punished child. And that, he realized, was exactly what it was. The second creature was its parent, and this was the baby. The thought made him shudder. We will keep your secret. We help the... the Gron with the dragons. This one can tell you so himself. The giant that had called the Gruel, that had called itself Gruel, scowled and glanced around, apparently only now noticing the black drake corpses scattered around the mountainside. You dragon killers? Yes, Khadgar answered desperately, but Gruul was not so easily tricked. He tilted back his monstrous head, his fang-filled mouth gaping open and laughed. The deep peals shook the walls around them and sent several small spires shattering to the ground. Kill baby dragons, maybe is said, still grinning. We do that. Not need help. No, you die. Wait, Khadgar cried. What do you want help with? They could probably take down more than just drakes if they absolutely had to. Girl sobered at once. You too weak. You cannot help. Maybe we can. Ask. Gruul was silent. Then he said in a somber voice, Blackwing Great Father. It took Khadgar a second to figure out what Gruel meant. His eyes widened. He burst out. Deathwing? You want us to kill Deathwing? What? cried Trollian. Deathwing? Here? And they want us to kill him, Alaria chimed in. Khadgar was as shocked as they. They'd known the Black Dragons had allied with the Horde, and had seen several of them dart through the portal to Draenor but he'd assumed it was only lesser members of the Dragonflight, not the Dragonflight Patriarch, their great and terrible sire himself. He left some black dragons behind as guards for the orcs at the Citadel, Trollian muttered, but he brought the rest of them up here, to these mountains. Khadgar nodded, then realized Grohl was still watching them expectantly. He took a deep breath and drew himself up to his full height, Yes, of course. Do not worry, we can handle Deathwing, he told DeGron with forced assurance. He won't be a problem for us. He did his best to ignore the stunned silence radiating from his friends and prayed Gruel couldn't see the sweat dripping off his brow, or that if he did, he didn't understand its significance. Gruel nodded, a grotesque smile splitting his massive lips. Good, he announced. Foolish, but brave. Gruel-like. He peered down at them. 
Now prove it. He gestured his enormous hand, lifting to indicate a peak not far away. Deathwing, the Gron explained. Kill. Help Gron rid mountain of pests. Then you pass. His smile shifted down to a scowl that revealed all his fangs. Tell no one. Cadgar nodded. Agreed. He hoped his voice didn't sound quite so quivery to Gruul as it did in his own ears. Gruul turned and began making his way across the mountainside. The massive Gron didn't bother searching for a path. He created one his heavy feet shattering stone and leaving a wide cracked trail through the stone spires, which broke off against his thick skin. The smaller Gron hurried to follow its parent, and the ogres. Cadgar was horrified to realize he now thought of them as small, even though they were twice his own height, shuffled along behind their two oversized leaders. Grimly, Cadgar followed. A thought occurred to him. Deathwing was here and the skull was in this direction. He paused for a second, closing his eyes, and then he grinned. What are you doing? Alaria whispered to him as she and Trollian fell into step beside him. We're supposed to be looking for Gul'dan's skull, not going up against Deathwing. Do you have any idea what that dragon is capable of? Yes, actually, he answered, but he's got the skull. What? exclaimed Trollian. The skull is right in front of us, and so is Deathwing. We'd have to confront him regardless, most likely. Wonderful. Now all we have to do is fight Deathwing to get the skull back, she shuddered. I'd rather face the entire horde any day. Privately, Cadgar agreed with her, but he saw no other option. They needed the skull, and Deathwing had it. He was deep in thought, going over his spells in his mind when Trollian gripped his arm and pointed. Look, he said in a quiet voice. They had reached a deep valley that led up to the peak in question, and it stopped, fanning out around the valley's edge. Eggs. The ground was littered with them. They were about a yard long and shone from within, with a pulsing red glow that revealed dark veins to the eggshells themselves, and coiled forms cocooned inside. That's what was in those wagons, Alaria spotted, Trollian whispered, staring. No wonder the dragons were flying right above them. Deathwing brought these here to Draenor. If they hatch, the black dragons will overrun this entire world. Then we'd best make sure they don't hatch, Alaria countered, raising her bow and nooking an arrow. Cadgar placed his hand on her left arm and pointed. Let's make those your first targets. The others followed his gaze and cursed softly as they saw the dark shapes winging toward them from the valley's far side. Fortunately, it seemed that none of the largest dragons were protecting the eggs. The first fledgling dragon to approach was swatted aside by Gruul, his casual gesture slamming the small dragon into the valley's far wall, hard enough to crack the stone there and drop the body in a shattered heap. The next one fell, twitching with one of Valeria's arrows through its right eye, and Cadgar froze the third to solid ice with a quick incantation. Those three had only been the vanguard, however. A fierce shrieking arose from all around the valley, and suddenly more dark, darting forms descended. The ogres excelled at brute force. Though smaller than Gron, they were still large enough to wrestle a drake down and snap its long neck, or bash in its skull. Many of them also proved to be spellcasters, firing bolts of arcane magic that seared through dragon wings and hide alike. The sheer number of drakes would have overwhelmed them, however, if not for the aid from both Gron and Alliance warriors. Charlian had his men using their shields for protection from the drake's claws and teeth, then slashing at their wings, though tough as leather. The, w the wings were still the drake's weak spot, and once a wing had torn, the creature was forced onto the ground, where it lost most of its agility. The ogres quickly caught on to this tactic, tactic and began tearing wings off entirely, hurling the, le the leathery appendages aside, 
while the now grounded creatures were stomped flat with heavy feet. Cadgar was reminded, with a sick feeling, of a cruel child tearing the wings off butterflies. At one point, Trolling muttered, You know, I'm not sure we're fighting the right enemy. Cadgar had to admit these tactics were brutal, almost ghoulish, but he couldn't argue with the results. Gruel and the other Gron, Cadgar thought of them both as male, had selected thick spires from the cliffs just beyond the valley. They swung those clubs around with enough force to create strong winds that buffeted the drakes, driving them back into one another and making them easier targets for the ogres and humans. Any drake unlucky enough to actually be within the club's radius was crushed instantly, and the valley floor was soon thick with bodies. The egg's next, Cadgar said to Trollian, but the paladin he hesitated, peering at one of the eggs but making no move toward it. Cadgar frowned at him. What's wrong? Cadgar asked. I... Dragons are sentient creatures. They think, they feel. It's one thing to fight the drakes. But these are infants. Just babies, really. They can't even fight back, and we're butchering them. Trollian, Ilaria said. Light, do I love you. Not least for that compassionate heart of yours. But these are black dragons. You know what will happen if they're not killed now. Trollian nodded grimly, making yet another one of those difficult decisions any general has to make in the thick of battle. Destroy the eggs, he shouted, stride, striding to the nearest and bringing his hammer down atop it. The thick shell shattered with a loud crack, followed by a softer thud as the hammer connected with the half-formed dragon inside. Large as a medium-sized dog, the unhatched dragon had smoky red skin and nubs where head and wings would have been. It did not move as it was attacked, save to twitch slightly. A pale reddish fluid oozed from the broken egg as the shell crumbled away, and the whelp within slumped to the ground, its final shudders already fading. The rest of the Alliance warriors quickly followed suit. Just as Trollian was breaching the last egg, and the ogres were dismembering the last drakes, Cadgar heard a loud shriek from the peak above, the same place where he had last sensed the skull. Glancing up, he saw another shadow launch itself into the air. Its wings covered all the valley in darkness. Its bulk dwarfed even Gruul, who shrank back against the valley wall before growling and straightening defiantly. His ogres and the lesser Gron were not made of such stern stuff. They shrieked and fled in terror. The shape plummeted down, sunlight glinting off its skin, its long neck arced, its jaws wide. Lava burst from its throat, a torrent of glowing magma that instantly incinerated ogre, human, dead drake, shattered egg, anything unlucky to fall within its spray. Pull back, Trollian shouted to his men, who were already scrambling away from the monstrous apparition. Back to the valley wall. They clustered there, Cadgar and Trollian and Ilaria at the forefront, and watched as the gargantuan dragon and watched the gargantuan dragon alight. Cadgar gulped. He'd known the creature would be impressive, but this Deathwing was almost inconceivably huge. The drakes they had been fighting seemed as toddlers compared with their great parent. Cadgar could barely take it all in. But one thing stuck, struck him as curious, even in the midst of his awe. The father of the black dragon flight had plates of silvery, glinting metal running along its spine. Beneath those plates were glowing lines of red, like the magma Deathwing had just attacked them with. The dragon's massive claws dug deep into the stone in the valley floor. All but his left foreclaw, Cadgar saw. That was held high and curled inward, as if injured or holding something. The skull, he whispered to Trollian and Ilaria, he has the skull with him. Nice of him to bring it to us, Trollian muttered, but how do we get it? Deathwing folded his wings behind his sinuous body, 
and settled on his haunches. His long neck reared up and glared balefully down at them, his red eyes alight with rage. My children, the dragon howled, his voice like fire licking at burning wood, like metal chipping bone. Along with the anger was a deep grief. My children, murdered. His tail lifted, slammed down, and a crack ran along the earth. Come forward, disgusting, cowardly wretches, murderers of defenseless infants, in no torment and madness before I devour you whole. Who will be the first to be blasted to ashes? His gleaming eyes narrowed as they focused with dreadful intent upon Gruel. You, he said, drawing out the single syllable so that it contained a world of promised agony, his voice dropping to almost a whisper, almost a caress, and light help him. Oh, Cadgar knew with a sharp gratitude that that terrible gaze had for the moment passed him over. Yet Gruel did not quail. I, he proclaimed, I am Gruel, greatest of Gron. This my land, my mountains. You will not take them. You go or end up like children. Deathwing's roar of fury nearly deafened Cadgar. My children, he wailed, and the pain in his voice almost, almost, made Cadgar feel a twinge of sympathy. Perfection incarnate, beautiful and defenseless, the words turned unintelligible as Deathwing howled and almost flailed in his anger and grief, magma dripping from his jaws, shredding the stone upon which he stood, his flapping wings creating almost tornado, for tornado force gales. Cadgar began to wish he'd listened to Turalyon's reluctance to smash the eggs. What had they been thinking? Light, what had he been thinking? To stand up to this monster, this ancient, evil, terrifying version, vision of rage. How could they possibly defeat him? Oh, how brave of you. Deathwing's grief had sharpened into scorn. Less raw, but no less deadly. Such courage it must have taken to smash shells and murder defenseless infants. A pity you will not live long to brag about such a noble feat. His wings flared out behind him and beat down again. The powerful gusts they created slammed Gruel back against the wall. Gruel's ogres yelled in fear and cringed back, almost hugging the walls of the valley. Gruel would get no aid from them. <clears throat> Puny mortals, I have had many names throughout history, all of them spoken with dread. Neltherion, Zaxus, and many more. Yet you shall know me best as Deathwing, for so I am. I am the bane of life, the darkness within history, the lord of death, the master of destruction, and I tell you now, and so it is true, that this world is mine. Never, Gruel replied, snarling and launching himself at Deathwing. The giant Gron slammed into the colossal dragon's chest with an impact that cracked the cliffs around them and sent rock cascading down from the fractured peaks. It drove most of the Alliance forces from their feet, and even the ogres to their knees. Other dragons had appeared along the valley walls, watching their father intently, and they were forced back a step as well. But when the dust had cleared, Gruel was shaking his head, and Deathwing stood unmarred and unmoved. Is that the best the oh-so-mighty Gruel can do? Deathwing sneered, lowering his head so that his bony forehead ridge brushed up against Gruel's own thick brow. Is that all you have? He lifted one foreclaw, the other still closed and curled up to his breast, and held it over Gruel's head as if he were preparing to squash an insect. It was like a signal. The dragon shrieked, the dragons shrieked a battle cry, sprang from their perches, and flew with lethal grace toward the humans, ogres, and Gron lining the walls of the valley. The ogres seemed to be paralyzed, staring slack-jawed at the winged doom. St Sons of Lothar, attack! Trollian's voice was clear and strong, and carried much farther than it should have. 
He lifted his hammer, his eyes bright, and charged forward to meet the drakes. The hammer glowed as it struck the first drake square in the skull. The beast dropped like a stone. For Kael Thalas, Alary and her rangers began firing. Battle cries rose from the Alliance soldiers, elf and human alike. And it was joined by the ear-splitting roar of the ogres and Gron as they roused themselves from their terror. The dragon swooped down, petty with excitement and pride in their father, spewing magma or clamping their jaws on their enemy. The ogres and Gron seemed to remember that they had fought drakes before, and again began to pluck the creatures from the very air and rip off their wings. One ogre slammed his flapping victim so hard into the wall of the valley that a whole chunk of it crumbled, sliding slowly down in a mass of broken stone and dust, burying its path, burying in its path those too slow to escape. Khadgar kept his eyes on the battle between Deathwing and Gruul. The Gron was brave to even go up against the Black Dragon, but he would soon lose. The mage suspected the only reason he hadn't lost before now was because Deathwing was toying with him, tormenting the creature he belie believed had slain his precious, obscene offspring, had slain his precious, obscene offspring before dispatching him. And when he was done with Gruul, they had to get that skull from him. Had to. Khadgar raised his staff high and muttered words of power. The resulting lightning strike seared his eyes, blinding him for an instant and leaving after images when he blinked. The massive bolt struck Deathwing square in the chest and actually succeeded in jolting the dragon back a few feet. Lightning skittered along the metal spinal plating like water droplets on a hot skillet, but Khadgar realized that the dragon was unharmed. Well struck, little mage, Deathwing acknowledged, though his long mouth curved up in a cold smile. But I mastered such magics millennia before your race first learned of them. You will have to try much harder than that if you wish to breach my skin. Gruel hurled himself into the fray once more, rousing reluctant admiration from Khadgar as the mage frantically considered what to do. Deathwing turned his attention to the Gron, weathering its awesome blows easily and batting him aside with a quick flip of his wings. Khadgar stared at the dragon, a sickening feeling spreading through him. Khadgar stared at the dragon, a sickening feeling spreading through him even as the mage attacked again. He watched with horror as Deathwing shrugged off a spell that should have turned his very bones to ice. Deathwing was right. Khadgar realized he'd been an arrogant fool. There was no way to pierce that armored hide. Armored. Khadgar's, eye Khadgar's eyes narrowed. Deathwing shone in the red sunlight, gleaming like dark brass or pools of blood, and Khadgar studied him. Metal plating with gaps and fissures underneath. It glowed magma red, and it all clicked. His ice spell hadn't worked because it couldn't hope to compete with the heat Deathwing's entire body generated. The black dragon was virtually made of lava, and those plates along his spine, which Khadgar saw, now saw were red hot along the edges of the joints, were holding him together. Lightning didn't work. Fire and ice were useless, his most powerful magics, and they didn't touch the dragon. But what about one of his weakest? What about one of the first spells they taught in Dalaran? A parlor trick every apprentice could perform at will. Hope, painful and yet intoxicating, rose inside him. It could work, maybe. It was the last card he could play, and so play it he would. Play it he had to but he would need to get closer. Stealing himself, Khadgar squared his shoulders and pushed forward, brushing past where Trollian and Ilaria were battling, a black dragon alongside two ogres, and walked alone toward Deathwing. Fortunately, Gruul was keeping Deathwing busy, and neither of the massive creatures noticed the old seeming man who crept toward them until he was only 10 paces from Deathwing's head. 
Grohl was struggling to escape the heavy, taloned foot Deathwing had pinned him with, and the dragon was leaning in, his long jaws opening to bite, when Khadgar re raised his hands and cast his spell. Sensing the magic, Deathwing glanced around, and spying Khadgar laughed at him. More wizardry, wizardry, the dragon mocked. Eyes slitted like those of an amused cat. How entertaining. Have you not realized yet that your mightiest spells cannot harm me? But then the words of Khadgar's, Khadgar's incantation registered, and the dragon's eyes flew wide with alarm. What are you, pathetic wretch? I will silence you. He turned and ignoring, he turned, and ignoring Grohl utterly, bore down with terrible purpose on Khadgar. The sight was so horrifying, Khadgar almost forgot to complete the spell. Shaking his head, he rallied, and spoke the command of words in a voice that shook. A loud creaking rose from the dragon before him. Deathwing screamed again, writhing in pain, as metal plates covered his body began to shift. Bending away from him, joints snapped and several plates fell away completely. Where that had happened, magma erupted as if from a volcano, gushing out and spilling onto the valley floor. The armor really had been holding Deathwing together, and as Khadgar's spell removed it, the dragon began to lose cohesion. No, Deathwing. Deathwing, if such a thing were possible, looked utterly taken aback. He craned his neck to look at the damage, at the crunched, warped metal, the seeping magma, then turned, glowing eyes on Khadgar. You may have won this battle, I give you that, but hear this, and hear it well. I have seen you, mage. Khadgar gulped, unable to tear his gaze away. I have burned your face into my memory, Deathwing continued his voice reverberating along Khadgar's bones. I will haunt your dreams and your waking moments alike. Rest assured, I will come for you, and when, I, and when at last I do, you will beg me for your death as the only respite from your terror. His mighty wings unfurled again, his claws spasming open to release both Gruel and the skull, and Deathwing took to the air, his wings beating hard as he fled the mountains. Khadgar's legs, which had been shaking, finally collapsed, and he sat on the ground for a long moment, gasping and acutely aware that he'd just been terribly, terribly lucky. With their father and ruler gone, the remaining black dragons seemed to lose heart and focus. One of the larger creatures abandoned the fight immediately, his body covered with heavy gashes, and one wing bent at an odd angle. Father, he cried, leaning back to snap at where the smaller Gron had his tail in a death grip, death grip. Father, wait for me. Spitting magma, the dragon burned the Gron's hands until it released its hold, then took off after Deathwing. With the horror that was Deathwing forced into retreat, the ogres and Gron seemed to go mad for slaughter. They descended upon those dragons that had not escaped in time, ripping them apart with huge meaty fists and teeth, crunching their throats, lifting the bodies to the skies, and then impaling the still writhing drakes upon the rocky spires. Khadgar took advantage of the confusion to grab up the skull Deathwing had dropped. Human, but powerful. What great potential I sense here. But that is to be expected, is it not? from the young apprentice to Medivh. You can become stronger yet, if you have the courage to embrace your destiny. Why not become my apprentice? I will teach you that blood and slaughter are keys to true. Ah, Khadgar gasped, almost dropped the skull. Gul'dan, he gritted his teeth and shuddered, shuddered his mind. Even dead, it would seem, Gul'dan was a danger. Quickly he stashed a skull in a pouch and hurried back to where Turalyon and the others still fought. I have the skull, he told Turalyon, finding his friend just, just backing away from a dragon's death throes. Well done, Turalyon said. Now let's get out of here. 
we retreat now. Their men were quickly gathered and Ilaria rounded up her rangers. The ogres and the Gron were too busy tormenting the dragons to even notice their, their departure. Trollian led them quickly back out of the mountains. Your gamble worked, Khadgar, and brilliantly, he told his friend, once they were well clear of the valley and its carnage. We got the skull, and we dealt with the dragons. They won't be aiding the horde anytime soon. Khadgar thought about Deathwing's parting threat. Aiden couldn't suppress a shiver. He wasn't so sure Trollian's optimism was warranted. Nevertheless, he nodded as if he believed it. All that's left is Nerzul. Once I get that book, I can close the portal for good. All that was left was stopping a powerful shaman, one who had the powers of the skies and the earth, from opening portals into countless worlds. Still, they just dealt an, imp an they just dealt an extremely powerful dragon a setback. Who knew? Maybe they'd be able to do this after all. One thing was certain. If they didn't stop the orcs now, on Draenor, they would never stop them. You can